Our next guest is Adil Zaman, a partner at Wall Street Alliance Group, here to discuss, among other things, some opportunities in the healthcare sector. And Adil, I'm just wondering where you see opportunities, or is, or is healthcare looking pretty overbought to you at the moment? Great to be with you. So uh, we believe we work with a lot of physicians all across the United States, and uh, irrespective of whichever candidate gets elected, they believe that healthcare is positioned to do extremely well in this post-COVID environment. Because as a society, we are going to be spending more on healthcare, and the areas within healthcare that they see the most opportunities in is more testing, more telemedicine, more investments into. PPE equipment, more investments into drugs to combat viruses. So in the current environment where we are focused on elections, the key is to identify sectors that will do well irrespective of who gets elected. And healthcare sector is one sector that we believe is uniquely positioned to do that. So before we get to the election, I think we have to consider uh, a change at the Supreme Court that may or perhaps undo the Affordable Care Act. And I'm, I'm wondering whether that presents a little bit of risk for the market. It, it does present a little bit of a risk for the market. And obviously, we are talking about the victory of uh, if Biden comes in, uh, there's also going to be certain other dynamics that are going to change within healthcare, such as lower drug prices and if, expansion of Affordable Care Act. But overall, in irrespective of these risks, we believe that healthcare is uniquely positioned to do well in this environment. And in a diversified portfolio, you know, we also have to look at other sectors that follow the same theme, uh, which is that they will do well irrespective of whoever wins the election. And we also feel that technology is not overboard. This is not a bubble. Uh, things like cloud, e-commerce, and social media are going to do extremely well in this post-COVID environment. But I'm, I'm reading your notes here, and you say short-term, you do see the market being overbought, and there potentially could be a correction of up to 20%, which is a very significant correction. Uh, I assume you see that happening in only specific sectors, and, and I'm wondering when we might expect to see that to happen. You see, uh, you know, a, a peak to trough, uh, the market could decline up to 20%. And, you know, next week we feel that this decline will continue because this battle in the Senate for the confirmation of the Supreme Court nominee is going to get extremely ugly. And the likelihood of a second stimulus prior to the election is looking very unlikely. We work with a lot of small businesses across the United States. And this stimulus was essential for many of them to keep their doors open. And unfortunately, right now, because of this delay that we are going to see, many businesses are going to shut their doors. And even though we are going to see the last employment report before the elections coming out on Friday, uh, it will show an improvement. But still, we feel GDP growth will decline because of the lack of this stimulus. So we are positioning clients for an overall short-term correction in the market, which we believe uh, will uh, lead to some opportunities in sectors like healthcare and technology. Well, healthcare and technology, I mean, that covers a pretty wide range. We can talk a little bit about pharma companies, biotech, but I'm wondering about the hospital companies, the hospital providers, because many of them suffered uh, financially during the pandemic, and, and some have yet to really fully recover. Is, is that one area in healthcare that re perhaps represents the greatest risk? Uh, that, that is uh, certainly an area within healthcare that represents uh, uh, quite a risk. Also, you know, we feel that we work with a lot of physicians all across the United States, and we are also seeing that not only there, but a lot of these physician practices, they are also hurting because as the money from the first stimulus runs out, but more importantly, we believe that this, these are going to be short-term factors. And in the long term, the physicians that we are speaking with, they're telling us that eventually we will uh, get a vaccine and medicine will catch up to overcome COVID and the market is going to go higher. So we are positioning, in spite of these challenges, we are positioning client portfolios to take advantage of this type of a correction. 
with about 70% in equities and about 30% in fixed income, which gives us the adequate firepower to rotate out of fixed income into equities when the correction does happen. So, yeah, we've talked a little about the correction. Now, what's the upside risk? What sort of gains could you realistically anticipate? So, you know, if we, if we look at this, uh, you know, right now, the, the, the noise in the market, the news that is dominating the market is the election. And uh, obviously COVID-19 as well. Um, you know, we feel that as far as the elections are concerned, um, you know, irrespective of what happens in the short term, in the long term, the market is going to rise. If you remember when Obama uh, came, you know, there was this talk about a socialist agenda which could cause the market to decline. When Trump came, there was this talk about, hey, there's a celebrity and, you know, it's uncertain market will decline. Yet the market went up. And we've seen this decade after decade that irrespective of whether it's a Democratic president or whether it's a Republican president, the market does go higher. So that is why we firmly believe that when COVID gets resolved and when the president, uh, you know, in the long term, the market Mm -hmm. will go up. uh, We do believe there is an election risk in the market in terms of whether the results are contested, which again will... That's a big risk if the results are contested. Adil Zuman, partner at Wall Street Alliance, thank you so much for joining us on Daybreak Asia. This is Bloomberg.